In this video, I'm going to show you all about lead captures in Dubsado. I click on my leads tab and the only lead we have in here is Doug and Patty's invitations that we just created. But wouldn't it be nice if Doug and Patty could do some of this work for us and we didn't have to create that lead from scratch. Enter what's called a lead capture. So we'll head over to templates and click on forms. And as you can see, there's five different types of forms. We will touch on all of them, but I want to start with your lead captures over on the right. On my main account, you can see I have several different ones, but my new lead capture form is my most generic. And I just want to show you what this looks like. So you might think this looks like a normal contact form, which it mostly does but I want to show you some of the capabilities. So every lead capture form in Dubsado is going to require a first name, a last name, and an email address. And that's because they're basically going to then create that project for us. Whereas I had to enter Doug and Patty's information, when they fill this out somewhere, it's going to automatically come into Dubsado as a job or a lead for us. So we don't have to actually create that, we can allow them to do it. And then we can use Dubsado's form capabilities to get a whole bunch of other information if we want. It is kind of a balance, this is kind of a long contact form, uh, but if your business is a little bit simpler and you don't need so much information, then you don't have to have all of these questions. So I wanna show you a few of the capabilities so you have an idea of what the forms in Dubsado can do. We have these where you just fill in information. We have some helpful little gray text here, which I think is really great. You can customize all of that. Uh, we have a drop down. We also have a text box and even a link to something else in case this isn't right for them. Uh, we have these little buttons that you can select. We have a date select. And then we even have a file uploader where they can upload inspiration images. So so many things going on here. And then you can even take this lead capture and embed it into your website, which is so much fun because this looks totally seamless, does not look like Dubsado is on my website at all. It just looks like a nice contact form on my website. And then once they submit it, it will send me an email and it will automatically bring this job into Dubsado for me. So now that you know what we're doing, how do you actually build that out? All of the Dubsado forms will have the same general building blocks that you can use, although they will require slightly different things. So a lead capture is just going to require that first name, last name email because it needs that information to create a viable project. So they have some samples in here for you. And each of Dubsado's forms is going to use all of these different types of elements. So you can see we have text box, image, divider, short answer, date select, drop down, like all those things I was mentioning. You can even do custom HTML code if you know how to do that. So there's a lot of wonderful things that you can use here in Dubsado and some of these grayed out elements you will be able to use on other types of forms or in different areas. And then each different building block can go inside of a container. So a container is basically just a box. They're not going to see it. And then each container will have its own um, settings as well. So you can have one, two, three, or four columns as opposed to each question being one after the other. You can put one in a column and put one over here in a column. And we saw that on my form that I do have some columns here just to make the form a little bit more condensed. So this container gives you the ability to customize things a little further. You can change the width of it. You can change the content width within the container so you have more margins. Uh, you can change background color and text color even within this particular container. So it just gives you the ability to customize a lot of stuff. You can even add like a background image from your image library as part of the container. This library is not really a great option. So we're going to reset that <laughs> just to have a color. So this gives you the ability to match your brand settings, um, make it look more interesting, separate things in a way that makes sense, make it easier for your clients to fill out. So there's a lot of information here that you can do with the container. And then for instance, if I put, if I add anything into the container, it will stick with those columns. It will stick with all of those settings that we created for each container. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to discard changes because that was not very beautiful. But if we wanted to add a lead capture, we would just click this button. And as you can see, some of the things that are required are going to be on here. You have to have that first name, last name, and email here. You also have a couple other things as suggestions, but you don't necessarily have to use those. So maybe at the top, I'm going to put in um, an image. You can just drag and drop these. And here I might just include my logo we are going to have some element settings in addition to those container settings. The elements will apply to the individual 
text box, image, whatever it is you're adding. Um, so we'll change our alignment to the right and make this only 30% so it's not so big. Then we might add a container down here because we don't want these to be so big. And we'll put first and last name in the column. We'll put email and phone number in that column as well, and even their event date. Now, how can we help? Another option would be to add something like a drop down for uh, what's your approximate budget, for instance. And then you can change this to say $1,000 to 1,999, et cetera. And then all the way up say $10 million plus. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Beautiful. And then now our drop down has those options. And then you can continue to further customize that particular element if you'd like. Now let's add just a little text box about what they can expect from us in the future. And if you double click, you can just edit this in line. Okay, what's next? We're so excited to work with you. You'll receive a preliminary proposal in two to three business days. And this is where you can put in all types of signature fields. You can put a link to your website. You can put a photo of yourself. Uh, you can do so many things here, but I hope this gave you an example of how you can create this form. And now we're going to click save the form. We can also rename it if we want to. I'm just going to keep it how it is. And then over here, we have our sharing settings and our sharing settings are going to be different on different types of forms. So this is kind of unique to the lead capture form. It's something that can be shared publicly outside of the project. That's not the case for all different types of forms. So a lead capture form will always automatically create a new project when it is filled out. If that is not what you want, then you can use a different type of form. But here we have our embed code and then we also have a direct link. So if you ever have someone who reaches out to you via like Instagram DM or something, you could just copy and paste this particular link to them. Um, otherwise, you can embed it in your website using the embed code, for instance, what I have done here. So just as a quick reminder, we have containers, which are boxes that can contain a lot of different elements and they can be customized in their own way. And then you have all these other different elements that can be within containers. I believe you can even put a container within a container if you want to. Um, so there's lots of ways to customize these. This is such a simple version of it, but I think once you start working with it, as with all things in Obsado, you will start to fiddle, play, bring in a little more customized, and then over time it will grow into something that you really like. As you can see, mine is very simple. We don't have a lot of customization going on because we have embedded it on the website where I have a lot of different design elements over on the website. So I don't need to do a lot of that here in Dubsado. And each form will also have their form settings. Um, we're not gonna get into workflows yet, but once we do, you can apply one of them right here that will automatically apply to anyone who fills out this lead capture. You can do a thank you message. I definitely recommend doing that and a redirect URL if you'd like. So taking them to your website, if this is not on your website, etc. And then if you don't want them to come in as a lead or if you want them to come in as a specific type of lead, for instance, you can set the project status right here. And then all those lead capture forms will be here. You can have different ones on different parts of your website. In general, these same form building capabilities will be available on all of the other types of forms as well. There will just be some slight differences, which I will show you. The main thing with lead captures, we require that first name, last name, and email. And then everyone who fills out the lead capture will automatically get a new email and they will be in here under the leads, just like Doug and Patty. Whenever I get a new lead, the first thing I like to do is send them a proposal proposal. But in order to do that, I first have to put in my contract that I'm going to use for them. So in the next video, I'll show you how to make contracts in Dubsado.